Hello, folks. Well, we've come to the mountains of Jasper this weekend to try out our new tent, the Land Mountain Ultralight Single Person Tent. Now, we think that this is going to be a really good tent for stealth camping during the winter months. However, we're in the summer here in Alberta, so we're here this weekend to give it a waterproof test because we are expecting some rather heavy rain over the next 24 hours. So I hope that you'll stick with us and uh, just see how this little thing copes. So this tent we actually bought from Amazon and it costs around about 100 Canadian, which is approximately 72 US dollars based on current exchange rates. It weighs about one and a half kilos, which is approximately three pounds, which is apparently pretty good for backpacking. Now I'm not backpacking this weekend, so all you backpackers out there, if you think that's a good weight, let me know. Now it also says that it comes with its own footprints, but I've yet to find one in there, so I'm actually going to be using my own for pitching the tent. So this is it in a tent, um, you lay this out first and then you put the poles in around it um, before pegging it down. Um, I'm going to have to get a move on because it looks like this weather is moving in and I really do want to get that fly sheet over this before the rain hits. These are the usual aluminium poles that you get in tents. Okay, so when you put the, the, the poles together, you get this frame and all that you need to do is this little eyelets in each of the four corners of the inner tent. And these poles are made to bend. So that enables you to give you the shape of the tent. And then it's really quite simple because of these little hooks, which of course just hook onto the poles so that you actually get the structure of your tent. You just hook on the ridge line, if you like, to give you the structure of the tent. And of course, what's nice about this is that if you decide that there's too many tree roots underneath you or there's rocks under there, you can actually move it and it's actually very light and portable if you decide you want to pitch it elsewhere on your site. But I'm perfectly happy with it here. So now I'm going to peg it down and get that fly sheet on. Well, for summer camping, this would be a great little summer tent. But uh, as I say, we've got this weather coming in, so I'm going to try and get this fly sheet on. What's nice about this fly sheet is that you have these clips here. They just attach to the inner tent really easily. And then if you do need to attach, adjust things just to make it a little bit more snug, these are flexible, which makes it a little bit more secure keeps that rain off you when it comes down from the inner tent. So we've also got these little clips here um, attached to this loop and that's attached to both the fly sheet and the inner tent and it enables you to just give you that little bit more space and tension between the inner and the outer and obviously this is a, a little guy rope where we, which we're going to peg down shortly and just stop this fly sheet flapping around in this wind. There you go, the fully erected land mountain tent. Admittedly, it's not the perfect pitch. We've had to make some minor adjustments just to try and get it looking something like, but a first flight, first time attempt, it's not too bad at all. And obviously when you're camping in the mountains, you do usually want a tent that's visible just in case of an emergency and you need somebody to find you more easily. But for stealth camping, particularly in the winter, this tent would be ideal, I think, certainly with the color, this is a three season tent. I'm pretty sure with the right equipment, you could actually use it for that winter camping. So let's go and have a look inside. Now the zips are actually made of plastic, um, which makes them a little bit quieter in that windy weather, um, unlike a metal zip, which jingles around and makes a noise. These are very quiet. <laughs> Um, straight away one of the things I have noticed with this is it doesn't have that mosquito netting, that double netting that you sometimes get on a tent where you can have 
your door open or closed, but you can still have a window, if that makes sense. So what I'll say, first impressions on getting inside, is that I do think that there is room in here for one person and their backpack. I'm actually going to be sleeping in here tonight with my little dog, Wilson, again. Um, I think there's enough room. As I've said before, I'm five foot six, around about 140 pounds. And yeah, I could certainly lie down in here easy enough. There's certainly plenty of space above my head. And if we take a look at my feet, it's not like they're butt up against the edge of the tent. There isn't any vents in here. Um, so you are kind of, you just have the one entrance here. There's no, no vents in the ceiling or anything. There is a little hook there if you want to hang a light up. Um, not a great deal else to talk about. There's not any pockets in here, no storage pockets, which you sometimes find. Um, it really is a very simple tent, but then it did only cost around about a hundred Canadian dollars. So you can't really expect anything too fancy. And, and again, for the money that we have paid for this, it really isn't too bad at all. And as with any tent, you can, of course, clip the door open easy enough there's some little toggles here so you can prop it open it's pretty easy so yeah first impressions it's not going to be too bad I don't think um the true test will be when I sleep in here tonight and obviously if the rain comes down luckily it's held off so far but it'll be a good test if it does start raining later on in the evening and overnight so uh, I'm going to get my bed in in here now and uh, get things nice and cozy and then I'm going to get some drink and get something to eat because this is uh, certainly gives you an appetite being in the great outdoors Well, that's my bed all set up. It's certainly nice and cosy in here. And I think there's going to be plenty of room for me and my boy tonight. It is going to go up down to around about freezing point, hence the extra layers at the minute. Um, but I think we'll be absolutely fine in here. We've got the good winter sleeping bags. You've got the extra blankets. And of course, I'm sure we'll have some puppy snuggles to keep me nice and warm. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go and get some tea now. Um, we're having a Swedish delicacy tonight, which involves meatballs. So I'm a little intrigued as to what this is going to be. Um, ready for it? Let's go get some food. I'm sure it's going to be really tasty and I can't wait to tuck in. It's good. Well, it's now gone 11 o'clock and we decided that it was time to hit the hay, even though it's still pretty daylight out there. That's the thing with living so far north. You only get four or five hours of darkness during the summertime. And I'm pretty sure that by 5 a.m. when that sun starts to rise, I'll be wide awake and raring to go again. Anyway, uh, it's been quite a nice evening, actually. The weather hasn't been too bad at all. We were expecting some heavy rain, but in all honesty, the sun's been out. It's not been too cold. The interesting thing is, though, that um, we are expecting some light snow from midnight up until the early hours of the morning. So that's certainly going to be interesting to see whether we do wake up to um, some snow outside. Um, I guess it remains to be seen. Um, but for now, I'm going to say night-night to you all. I'm going to have little snuggles with my boy here. And we'll see you all in the morning. Well, good morning, everybody. And what a wonderful night's sleep I've just had. I was lovely and warm. 
And even though we didn't get the snow that was forecast, we did get some rain and that was a lot of rain. The good news is that this tent is bone dry on the inside. There was no rain leakage, there's no condensation. It was actually a really, really good night's sleep. So I'm going to make myself a brew now, have some breakfast, and then I will get back to you to give you a full rundown on this Land Mountain Ultralight single person tent. <laughs> You can really smell that fat wood. Okay, so there are just a couple of things I need to mention. The first thing is at the very beginning, I did mention about using this tent as a stealth tent. Now, obviously we're not in a winter environment at the moment. This is the middle of summer in Alberta. So this tent at the moment isn't very stealthy. However, given the color, which apparently is cheese colored, um, we're gonna be using this in the winter months. So we will be doing a follow-up video later on in the year when hopefully we'll get some snowy conditions to see just how stealthy this tent can be. Now, the other thing to mention is that at the very beginning, I said that this was a single person tent. It is actually marketed as a two person tent. However, have I spent the night in there last night with my little dog? Unless you're very, very skinny, there is no way that you would be able to get two people in there comfortably, especially if you took in your backpacks and any other kind of things with you. So how did the first night and the land mounting tent go? Well, I have to say that I was actually very impressed. We did get a lot of rain overnight, and with those tape seams, there was definitely no leakage in there. The tent was bone dry this morning. Even the zips were pretty good. There was absolutely no water or moisture coming in from there. There was no condensation. I really was very impressed with how dry things were, particularly when compared to previous tents that I've used. Now, when that rain did come down, the wind got really gusty. It wasn't the wind that woke me up. It was actually the heavy rain on the tent. And one of the other things I was impressed with was that with the pitch of the tent, there was no movement whatsoever when that wind really did get quite strong. Now, I also said at the beginning that it wasn't the perfect pitch. So with a bit of practice, this is a very, very stable tent and some of those more, I won't say extreme conditions, but more blustery and wet conditions, I probably would trust this tent. So all in all, I am actually very impressed with this tent, particularly considering the amount of money that we paid. It's a hundred bucks Canadian, you really can't complain. And I am looking forward to using it again in those winter months, just to see whether we can get away with one of those stealth camps. Well, thank you for joining me this weekend. I hope that you've enjoyed watching. Thanks to all my new subscribers that have joined me recently. And thanks to those of you who have followed along from the very beginning. There's going to be more content coming soon, so if you do like what you've seen, please do consider subscribing. And in the meantime, I shall see you all again very soon.